everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. So today we're talking about real numbers, real numbers. Why would you say real numbers? Your first question, like as opposed to, as opposed to imaginary numbers. Yes, there is such a thing as imaginary numbers or there are such things as imaginary numbers. That is a topic for another day. It is not for today. Today is real numbers. And we can divide real numbers into different categories. And there's there's five main categories they get divided into. And we're going to go over what those five are. These are the ones you're going to hear a lot. Integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. All of these are in the category of real numbers. Okay. So first thing we have here on the list is integers. Integer is, if you have a basic standard number line, you know, your standard number line you work with in school, everything on that standard number line is an integer. Every one of these, no fractions, no decimals, no square roots, none of that. All of our negative, those rounded numbers, those round numbers, all the negatives, all the positives, and zero. Those are integers. Okay, then back it up, back it up, back, back, back it up. Then we have whole numbers. Whole numbers gets rid of this part of the number line. And it's zero and one, two, three, four on up to infinity. So it's basically the numbers you learned when you very first started learning numbers, when you're in kindergarten, first grade, and you're doing your numbers, or even before, you know, some, you know, most of us learned at least a few before. Um, how old are you? I'm two. So you learn these numbers. They're the first numbers we learn. No negatives, no fractions, no decimals, none of that. Zero, one, two, three, the counting numbers, as it were. Those are whole numbers. And then finally, we have natural numbers. And this may seem a bit silly, but here we go. Do, do, do. Now you have natural numbers. <laughs> the definition being natural numbers are positive integers. Zero isn't negative or positive. It's zero. So it's not included in this natural numbers. Okay, now on to rational and irrational. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction or it's a repeating decimal. These are sort of the things you're looking for. If I can write it as a fraction, it's rational. If it isn't, integers are rational. They, they end, they terminate. So a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal, those are rational. So here's our examples of that. So we have like our integers. So like negative five is rational. One fourth is rational. 0 0.3 repeating is rational. One seventh is rational. Interestingly enough, if you look at one seventh in a calculator, if you divide that, if you have a shorter calculator, it doesn't, when I say shorter, like a shorter display on your calculator, it doesn't look like it's a rational one because you'll see something like this 0 0.14285. 714. Oh my goodness, that's an irrational number. But no, if you have a longer display, it just keeps going. And this is actually a repeating <laughs> decimal. That number just keeps repeating. That pattern keeps repeating. Okay, so rational numbers can be those integers, whole numbers, all those sort of things. And anything can be written as a decimal. That includes ending like 1.56. That's a an ending or terminating decimal. That is a rational number. Or 0 0.76 repeating. 
That would be a rational number. It repeats. And then finally, we have our irrational numbers, like the granddaddy of them all, pi. Pi is irrational. There is no pattern. It is just a string of digits. It doesn't repeat. It doesn't go on. That is an irrational number. Something like square root of two is an irrational number. It doesn't repeat. It doesn't go anywhere. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 1.4142135562. It just keeps on going. It's very irrational. A lot of your square roots, like square root of seven, are going to be irrational numbers. Okay, so those are our broad definitions. The thing that you're going to come across is, a lot of times in your class, is not just what are these, but what's in one group, but not this group. If it's this, is it also that? For example, it's the square rectangle dilemma. I have a square and I have a rectangle. And my definition of a square is all four sides are the same and I have four right angles. Okay, a quadrilateral with all four sides the same and four right angles. A rectangle would be quadrilateral or four sides with four right angles. So you go, okay, is this a rectangle? Yes, it is. Because the definition of a rectangle just says four right angles. And this does have four right angles. So a square is a rectangle, always. Then you go, well, is this a square? It has four right angles? No, it's not, because it doesn't have all four sides the same. So a square is always a rectangle. A rectangle is not always a square. That's the kind of problem you're going to get with these. So a real number, all of these that we've discussed, these five things, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, rational and irrational are all real. Okay, well, let's look at those, some of these groupings and see if we can figure out which ones go into which categories, which are, where are the overlaps? Okay, so these are integers. I'm representing integers here. Are all integers rational or irrational? Well, they have an ending. They don't go on forever. All integers are rational. Are all whole numbers rational? Yes, same thing. Are all natural numbers rational? Yes, same thing. Are all whole numbers integers? Okay, well, the whole numbers would be this section, and if the whole thing is integers, they are a part of it. So yes, all whole numbers are integers. But are all integers whole numbers? No, because all integers includes this part. That is not part of the whole numbers. So all integers are not whole numbers. These are the kind of problems you're going to get. Are all natural numbers whole numbers? Yes, because these are the natural numbers and they are all in this bigger bracket. Are all whole numbers natural numbers? No. Here's our whole number. Here's our natural number. And I'm not using these, just to clarify, I'm not using these brackets in the sense of the when we're doing, if this means something to you, <laughs> that sort of notation, no, I'm just using them to mark off the portion of the graph I'm talking about. If that doesn't mean anything to you, if that little notation doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. I'm <laughs> just letting you know, if you're looking for that meaning, that's not, I'm just using these as convenient visual shorthand <laughs> to draw things, to separate things. Okay. So those, those are the relationships there. And if you have a hard time visualizing it, just draw a number line. Just draw a number line if you get these questions. So if I have a natural number, a natural number is always a whole number. 
a whole number is always an integer. This only goes in one direction, saying always. An integer is always a rational number. And a rational number is always a real number. And it only goes in this direction. This is the always direction. If you go this way, it is sometimes. So a real number is sometimes a rational number. A rational number is sometimes an integer. An integer is sometimes a whole number. A whole number is sometimes a natural number. And the only other little sort of trail that we have is an irrational number is always a real number, but a real number is only sometimes an irrational number. So that's our little chain of always going to the right and sometimes going back. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.